I've had, if we counted them, probably seven bad D'Addario strings in 30 years. The reason we only stock D'Addario strings is because D'Addario strings are perfect. It's nice to be able to depend on something. I'm Ted Drozdowski, Editorial Director for Premier Guitar, and we are here in Nashville at the Country Music Hall of Fame Theater with Steve Morse. And Steve is playing two sets tonight yeah. with the Steve Morse Band and with the Dixie Dregs, yeah. and he's got a really great rig here that we're going to tell you about in just a moment. Uh, Steve, shall we start with this guitar? Because this sure. guitar is obviously very personal to you. Guitar is where it starts, for sure. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's serial number one, but it's, it's basically the same guitar they still make. Music Man makes a Steve Moore signature, and it's got two humbuckers, two single coil. This one has uh, the synth pickup, which I need for the trio, the Steve Moore band stuff, because I add in synth to uh, bolster some of the melodies, mm. and uh, also string pads and stuff. Anyway, got one master volume and one uh, uh, tone, so that I could, you know, fade in. And the tone is it. You can you can hear it shaping the the, the tone. Some some tone controls on guitars don't. It, it's like they don't make a difference. Yeah, this one seems really reactive. Yeah, and and part of that is picking the right capacitor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason it has twenty two frets instead of 24 is I feel that this pickup needs to be here mm -hmm. in order to be close to the ideal distance between your half point you know your your 12th fret and the bridge that it needs to be here and that's that's a big difference between my guitar and a lot of guitars that have you know more frets on the neck mm -hmm. um, and you've actually did a little mod up here Do you want to uh, yeah about a I've got bit? this I got this you throw some wire ties and it's it's basically held by the tension of the strings, which is like luthiers will look at this and just just put their heads down and go <laughs> get an aspirin, you know. But it, it was for for me. It was designed for me. And uh, since I changed my technique and I can't mute as much with my uh, the heel of my hand because you know I, the arthritis I can't bend my wrist as much without being in great pain. So I. <coughs> With, without the mute, with the mute, it kind of kills the excess. With the mute, without the mute. That's if you let it go forever. I'm not going to let it go forever, but I'm doing that just to illustrate how, yes. how, you know, how extreme it can get with high gain. Yeah. And so... So for some solos and some parts, I, I, I just, I just, you know, quit. No, because my hand's floating, these strings, they're, they're, they're there. I can still play, but they're not going to run away. It's, and that, that has to do, you can pick different types of foam to change that. Yeah, but that's very practical. Yes. It, very practical. It works great for me. Yep. And uh, that's what was, I just made it for me. A garage project, actually. Yeah. You should, we, we might talk to you about Front Armada issue next year. You hanger. Never know. It was hanger. <laughs> not garage. It was oh, my hanger. hanger. That's right. Air, it was an airplane garage. Airplane hanger. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got uh, two more toggles on there, too. We can talk about a little yes. bit in addition to the pickup selector. Okay. Well, this, this, is, this came from using uh, my... Uh, Strat neck on the telly body and and putting different pickups on and and coming up with this uh, configuration. I have two hummocks, and so I this this that's are my and my my warm one, and I combine them with this. Which, same with the the single coil. Here's the single coil. Combine it with a maybe you can hear it better. 
Well, without the volume, it's not become super apparent. Then, then we also have this pickup, which is. rhythm and stuff and you can also there's a position where you can combine that pickup with the output of these so you can have three pickups on at once there's a lot more possibilities than I've got here these are just the ones that over time that I think work better having to do, to do with the distance and relationship and phasing with each other and sort of really focusing in on your core tones your core yes. selection of tones yeah and that's why the Y2D uh, music man guitar that I used with purple only it only has three pickups because those were the 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 five sounds that that I and it's a five-way selector period yeah. those are the five sounds I use you know day in and day out with well, the band. well I think the first time I saw you back in the day it was I think after Night of the Living Dregs and you were playing uh, I think that telly back in those days weren't you oh yeah yep Do you, we're, we're playing Night of the Living Dregs tonight oh you are oh yes. cool very good, man. And you mostly, is it essentially a retrospective tonight? You know, you're just plumbing the Dixie Dregs catalog, the Steve Morris Band catalog? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we, you know, these days, you won't find many bands trying their new material out on the road, partly because it's published the next day or less. That is true. Know. So, but we're, we're doing a lot of stuff that we haven't ever played before, like uh, we're doing the, the Leprechaun Promenade uh, Suite, piece that 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 we uh, we did for in sonic back in the day you know in the 80s hmm. and we're bringing that back a different arrangement than than we've ever done and jordan rudis is playing he's just unbelievable so he's he's covering all the sounds <laughs> amazingly well and are and, you guys actually working on new material for another record at this point oh uh, uh, i am yeah. I'm, i always am okay yeah but but uh yeah i, I don't know i mean we don't know when that's going to happen, so okay. no plugs or well, anything. Well, it's great to see you guys back together. I know, uh, you know there was a, a substantial break, like 25 years, then a 2018 tour, and now here you are again six yes. years later. So it's good to see you all back in action. And speaking of action, what kind of action do we have on the floor? Okay. <laughs> this pedal board. Basically, my, my guitar amp is... Uh, the, the guitar and the amp are the main thing. The, the, I'm plugged straight into the angle amp, <coughs> playing through one cabinet, and... That cabinet is on its side in order to disperse the sound. It's an angle front cabinet. Disperse the sound left and right a little bit. Right, you know, so instead of just these people getting mad, I'm going to get these people <laughs> and these people. <laughs> Spread the joy. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I do try to keep the, the overall volume as, as low as absolutely possible. And we, we've achieved that so far, last night, we, that went really, really well. Okay, so the next thing in the, in the chain is the uh, compressor. For, for uh, rhythm stuff, I, I, without. It helps it get a more spitty sound. And that looks like a well-traveled Keeley. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the older ones. And then, the newest addition is the wetter box, which allows me to fade in reverb or delay, depending on which. Right now, I've got them both on. So when I'm playing, this is still the, the dry cabinet. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can fade in some, just delay. enough to, uh, it's going through the, the uh, effects loop. And if what you end up getting with this effects loop is a little bit of a ducking sound, so that if you were at high gain and really picking hard, you would hardly hear the delay. Mm. And on, you know, it comes out better on, on the lower gain stuff. And that's an interesting thing I'd never discovered because I always had my delay going through a separate amp. Okay, why through a separate amp? With distortion, the only way to, to get it to speak out has been for me to, to go through a separate amp. Otherwise, you're modulating the, the high gain signal twice or through, you know, depending on how many repeats into the amp. So here I have the uh, flashback delays with my tone print. 
I'll, mm -hmm. I have one set as short as possible and one set to about 450, 500 uh, milliseconds. And when I press down the pedal, you'll hear, well, maybe make sure, yeah, okay, you will hear. Yeah. You, <laughs> you'll hear the, the tone being added through the wet amp. And that, that tone that's being added is effect only, no dry. So here. <laughs> doesn't doesn't change the dry at all yeah it's it's simply adding to it then I do the same thing with with the uh, uh, short delay and it acts like a chorus so without with and and it's because it's coming through another source it, it, it it'll increase the volume so if, if you have a part you you want to bring out <laughs> That was just for that one little lick. I bring it out, and the idea is to to bring parts out and then take them back away before the sound man can say, "Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> I can hear the guitar. Let's bring it down." <laughs> Stealth uh, yeah, effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know I have my presets, which are just you know basically clean, and it's super clean. You, I, I can play my classical guitar through this. It's so clean. And I do, in fact, when, when we do uh, trio, longer trio sets than we're doing tonight. Which is interesting because I, I typically don't anticipate that kind of tone from an angle. And yet you're pulling a whole bunch of sounds that I normally don't hear from them. Well, that's, that was, the, a horse, the designer, I, I, when I heard that channel, I said, you've got to put that in. That's got to be, and, and then the, the rock and roll bread and butter channel is right here. Yep. The channel two. And channel three gives me more of a uh, uh, extreme mid-range boost so if if like with purple i had i use that a lot because if i'm if i give him more level or more meter when i'm playing a solo he's just going to say right on <laughs> and so by by getting a little bit more penetrating sound in the mid-range uh because there's no way i can compete on the high end and there's no way you can hear on the low end because it's all bass drum. The entire concert is bass drum and vocals with most rock bands. So to, to find a place, you've got to mess with the mid range. And that's where this is awesome because there's no active EQ. It's all done with tubes and their reaction with, with uh, one another, with, with him, you know, pulling and, uh, you know, well, he's got some capacitors and stuff, but it's, because it's very organic, it, it works well and penetrates well and, and works well when it's loud, too. Whereas some active EQ, when you turn it up, it, it, it becomes just harsh and, and horrible. Yeah, and we're talking about your uh, Steve Moore Signature Model 100 watt heads here. Yes. And, and uh, how, what was the process of designing this like? You know, how, how long did it take? Was it painstaking? No, and, no, it was no? great. Horst brought um, several prototypes to the side of the stage and let me play through it. And then he made a breakout board with knobs so I could try to find the center points to put the tone controls. And uh, as a result, if you go into a music store and take this amp, plug it into channel one or two, mm -hmm. put everything on six, if it doesn't sound incredible, something's wrong with your chord. You know, get a new chord. R try it again, and it will. And it will. Okay, cool. <laughs> and always on up here is a, a Hall of Fame and uh, a flashback as well. So, yeah. and those are going through the wetter box. Yeah, with with those my they, they the let me box. make my own tone prints. And there's millions of them on you know yes. that you can choose from. Yes, excellent. Cool. Yeah. Now you've also got a guitar synth on the floor here. Yes. And you've got a pickup for it at the end of your guitar. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, for for some songs we do in in the tr in the trio. Mm -hmm. The Steve like, band. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's so. okay. <laughs> no sweat. That's it's just beautiful, yeah. elegant. And and I and I use it a lot for stuff like uh, playing the melody. So what, one of the, the ways that I get around the, the, the uh, tracking errors 
is to have a, a generous envelope to start. None of my sounds like go, yeah. you know, with, with a hard edge, because that's where you're really going to hear those problems. So, you know, a lot of what I do is, is massaging and, and working with limitations, uh -huh. like with, with my right hand limitations and, and stuff like that. And there's always limitations with synths, at least the way I play. Well, and also with your delays, too, it seems that, you know, you have this intimate uh, understanding of all of your gear, and that's a beautiful thing. You know, and it's something that I think everybody should strive for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, with anything, your car, your, your whatever you work with, you, you need to understand the, the flow and, and the, the order of, of, so you can troubleshoot. Right. So, Steve, in addition to traveling with your number one, you've got another guitar right here, which has, I, I have to say, a pretty beautiful looking neck. Uh, well, would, but, uh, but from the back. But anyway, uh, what have we got here for your backup? Well, it's basically the, the same as the blue guitar, just a different finish. And uh, every guitar sounds different. Every guitar plays a little different slightly, but, but I, li I like this one. It's got a you know, little bit more chunky <laughs> than my other one. And uh, this is a little, the, the, the neck pickup is a little bit more clear, not quite as fat as my blue one. Uh, so uh, everything you, you get some and you you take some when you when you change something on an, on any instrument. But uh, I like this. I can I can pick it up and play all night long. And do clean stuff. Excellent. This, by the way, this is the same setting as the distorted setting. Okay. What sort of strings do you have on both of these guitars? Uh, the Paradigm Super Slinkies right now. I went to Super Slinkies when I started having the problems with my wrist, and mm -hmm. now I'm just about ready to think about going back to tens, you know, to get a better impact, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm still picking and and picking hard, so uh, I'm yeah I'm almost there. Okay. And speaking of picks, uh, what kind of pick are you using? Well, at the moment I'm using these uh, heavy nylon. They they uh, they have a serrated edge, you know, better for gripping like this which, which i never did for most of my 50 plus years of playing so uh, i was normally playing with two fingers and a thumb so when i go to to this grip it really helps me hang on to the pick so i can that's it it's for uh also impact the uh the hard celluloid picks are a little bit harder on my wrist so I either have to go to a thinner one, which gives a little bit more harsh sound, or this, which, again, it's a compromise. Yeah, yeah, that idea of adapting that we yeah. were talking about earlier. You, as we, uh, we adapt, as we survive and get older and yeah. change. So it's, a, it's an important thing to do. Um, Steve, thank you so much for talking to us today. Really appreciate it. Thank it's you. good to see you again after many, many, many years, because I haven't seen the band in a while. So I'm really excited about seeing Dixie Dregs again tonight. Well, me too. Thank and, you. And we're also going to talk about Andy West. I've used the Dario strings myself for at least 30 years, if not more. Everybody who comes in here, with very, very few exceptions, plays the Dario strings. And they didn't get there because of any reason except dependability and tone. And now we're visiting with Andy West, who has been a charter member of the dregs. That's correct. And, and it's great to see you back here in Nashville, Andy. And you have a couple of beautiful looking basses here. You're using a, uh, a Line 6 floor unit. Yeah, a Helix floor unit from Line 6. Tell us about them. Let's start with the bass. Yeah, well, so this is a G Gould six string bass that I had made um, about six years ago. And it was it's a special kind of uh, spacing. So I used a five string neck for six strings. Okay. So tight spacing, because I use a pick, I very rarely use my fingers except to just, you know, pop and that kind of thing. But I, I'm not a thumb slapper, so people that do a lot of slapping don't like the tight spacing, but it's yeah. perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have EMG pickups, which I've used forever, and I love them. Yeah, so this neck is actually graphite, and it was made by Jeff Gould, who uh, is the founder of Modulus Graphite, who they were the kind of originators of graphite in guitars. You know, he made basses and necks for Phil Lesh and the Grateful Dead back in the day and that kind of thing. Um, and, and you've got some push-pull controls on there? Yeah, these are just regular. Well, so I have two volume controls. Okay. And I talked to Rob Turner about this, and we all agree that two volume controls is better than a val balance control. It sounds different somehow when I 
tweak in the two things. And usually my, I, I just use one pickup or the other with a little bit rolled off. Mm -hmm. This pickup has a push button for, uh, I forget what it is. It's like the, um, it's like a humbucker versus standard, I think. And then just, you know, a module, a mod for uh, mid, mm -hmm. you know, frequency mid boost. boost and then bass treble. So cool. real simple, uh, it worked great. I love this bass. Um, there's another bass I have we could talk about real quick. Yeah, let's do that. This is a one-of-a-kind instrument. It was made in 1985. Really? Yeah, and it was a custom, and at, back in the day, Jeff and I, were, Jeff Gould and I were working with a Japanese company about manufacturing a bass that I designed. And so you can see it has really slim spacing, same spacing yep. down here, but more of a taper up there, and a headless design, which I love. Um, I'm trying to get Jeff to do me a headless bass at some point. And uh, it has a graphite neck, through body, walnut, and then this is was originally a tremolo bridge. Interesting. But it, it started to crack the bass a little bit, all the tension, and it started to come out, so I just put a wood block in there and made it just straight six string. And then recently I had Rob Turner, he made me some EMG pickups for it. Mm -hmm. So right now this is my backup bass, and uh, it has a very similar sound, okay. which is, you know, if, if I have a problem with this, I'll just go right to that. And, and what kind of EMGs are in both uh, instruments? Do you know? That would be a good question, okay. and um, I'm, I'm not really sure. I think they're the um, the ceramic pickup ones. They're okay. not the, they're, you know, not the and, uh, it's a little bit more hi-fi, less of the kind of, you know, meaty, crunchy sound that people want. I like a more full range tone with my instruments, so. Okay. And that's kind of the same, the same controls, yeah, same exact controls. same controls, okay. so it's, that's just cool. a setup that I and like. And the wood for this one as well? It's some kind of flame maple that is really beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of heavy, but it's, you know, I kind of, I like the concise body style, and I don't know. We'll see if I, if I get, I, I actually have a fretless that's like this, but we don't do fretless live on, you know, on tour, so that's that. Well, it's a beautiful instrument. Thank you. Um, and in addition to these two instruments, you are working with a Line 6 floor. Yeah, so the Line 6, Look, this thing is, you can go, you can see millions of videos of this thing online. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I don't need to describe what the Line 6 does, just how I use it mm -hmm. for the drags. Very simple. I've got it, just a couple of things. Um, so one of the things that I use is a, a, a parametric. Get rid of these. So. so So I have a little bit of high-end boost, mid-boost on, on the setting that I mainly use, and then I roll off some of that high-end for some of the softer stuff. Very subtle, not a lot of D, not a lot of stuff going on there. I also, when we do a, uh, <laughs> I can't help but make the reference to Spinal Tap because we do a thing with Dave LaRue from the Steve Morse Band. Mm -hmm and Van Romain, we do a thing where all seven of us are on stage <laughs> together and it's two basses. So I have something which cuts down the low end. So he, he covers with, with his fingers and everything. He's got a nice big fat tone and then you just hear the pick on top of it. Um, also, I use a chorus. Again, very subtle stuff. I'm not doing wild stuff with the dregs. It's mm -hmm. just to make things a little bit smoother or slightly different. A little bit of just... Any pitch changing or anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Pardon me? Any pitch changing or anything like no, that? No, no, not really. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a, a... Just the lower octave, but again, really subtle, nothing big. Yeah. You know, uh, just if I'm up here, you know, it's all really subtle stuff and the distortion is very not much. And earlier you said you started using this unit with the 2018 Dregs Tour? Yeah, that's cool. when I first got into it. Um, late 2017, I got this. Okay. And so that's eight years ago, <laughs> which is incredible because these things are still going strong. And I could, I could give them a plug because I know um, the, the originator of this thing, but Marcus Rao was with, um, you know, line, he started Line 6, and then he's often, often a lot of other stuff now. But... Um, it's a great unit. I love it. Uh, let's see. What and your else? signal's going right into these two uh, yeah. EV modules. Oh, yeah. So this here. is the other thing. Um, the, I use... <laughs> so it looks like a little stack, and it is. It's <laughs> just... So two 12s and, and tweeters, EV, these are their kind of top-of-the-line floor monitors. Mm -hmm. So I'm using essentially like... People call it 
a full range flat response. I don't want a mic on my cabinet, so I want my bass just to sound like that. And I want it coming out of here, so we do direct into the house, so it's really just the bass. I'm not into the, or I, I understand it, but for me it's not, it's not a thing. Like, oh, I need this amp to make my bass sound a certain way. No, I make it all sound the way I want it through this, this thing. And I love those cabinets. We actually had a subwoofer um, on the last tour, but Steve, Steve had me turning it down constantly because it was so, like on stage, it would become really big, even with small levels. I don't need it now, and we're using in-ears now, so he, he's still got a floor monitor. We're using one. One of those is his monitor. Ah, so, and, you know. And since the last time we did a rig rundown with you, obviously your, your rig has just expanded exponentially since that was a laptop. Well, yeah, <laughs> right, right. I, uh, so at home, I use the laptop and, you know, these things are, are less in play. You yeah. know, it's all about the computer and the software. And, you know, I'm really into all that stuff too. So. Well, if anyone's interested in that rig rundown, look for the five times surprise rig rundown with Henry Kaiser, Anthony Pirog, uh, Tracy Silverman. It's a terrific band. You ought to check it out. Um, but meanwhile, Andy, I just want to thank you so much again for being with us. It's good to see you again. I'm looking forward to hearing the show tonight. All right. Thank you. I had started the shop back in the early 80s, and the question was, how do we get strings for all the guitars we're fixing? The Dario was the first company that opened up the door to me in terms of getting material, and I've never forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs>